the third is James Brakes, no gates, you know it up, put on more steam. The same time kick is our quarterback, our lead, our ball game. All eyes to go to the block, cut inside, do the game, tap, this win in. We're going to see it again, we're here for the first man. Can everybody do that in 60 minutes? Rocky Town! <laughs> you always be to be the man, you gotta beat the man, and I'm saying, woo, right here. Yeah, you know, again, I think we, we, we should really have the best defensive line in the country. You know, I feel really good about our depth that we're building. Um, I feel really strongly about, you know, their attitude and the determination that those guys have played with. You know, and again, I'm not even talking as much about football, just great guys. You know, they're great human beings, and, you know, they've really worked hard. And, you know, as coaches, we want to see guys develop and reach their full potential. 99% of the people in this world want to be great. Would you agree with that? Yeah, they're called wannabes. 1% work to be great. Drop the mic on that. <laughs> um, Tony Swanson says, SJD, will you ever go back on the Talking Balls Network? Ooh, I like Talking Balls. I think that's Boogie Bentley running the show over there, man. That's a, he's, he's awesome at what he does. We actually... We're trying to get on his show during their stream for charity. Ended up not happening just by nature of the schedules conflicting. Um, but yeah, absolutely, we'll make that happen here in the near future. Boogie does an awesome job, and they do they do an awesome job over there on that platform. So yeah, without question. Without. Cool. Welcome, good Wednesday evening, and welcome to the Talking Balls Network. My name's Boogie Bentley, he's Coach Jay. Got a fun show lined up. Jamal Wallace going to be in the house for a little bit. Got to start a little bit early because Jamal's got a film session. How much you would go. you like to be in that film session with Coach G? Think you'd you, learn a little dude, something? I, I, uh, hell yeah, I'd learn a little something. We, <laughs> you can always learn, man. I, I, I learn from my players. I, I learn from other coaches. I, you know, I learn from everybody. I think if you're not uh, continually, continuously, I can talk, uh, learning the game, you're, you're falling behind in the game of football. So I'd love to be a, a fly on a wall like that. I almost told Jamal when he said that, man, sneak, sneak me in the back door. Where, where do I got to pay a door fee? What do I got to do? Uh, let me be a fly in the room. Cause I certainly would, would learn much from the, uh, very knowledgeable, uh, legend that is coach G. We're going to jump right into this thing. We are going to turn it into a fan call-in show after we wrap up with Jamal. I owe you guys a fan call-in show. We typically do that on Sunday, but I thought that would be a great time to get Jalen on the show. So he came on Sunday night. We kind of switched things around. Uh, so we'll let you guys come on, hang out. We'll turn it into a fan call-in show here in just a little bit. You guys know what to do. Do that YouTube stuff. Smash the thumbs up. Share out the link. Get people in here. 
Let's get the chat growing. Uh, growing. Let's uh, let's have some fun tonight. Let's get Jamal on the show. What he's muted. Let's see. He's a pro. He knows to unmute himself. <laughs> unlike you, Coach. Uh, what's going on, Jamal? I'm terrible. What's going on? What's going on, man? Uh, man, you got uh, b- busy times ahead of you. Uh, just wrapped up your visit to Knoxville. Uh, you're going to be moving to Knoxville here coming up in about a month or so. Uh, what I, I brought up Jalen because he was on the show Sunday. You were in the chat, and Jalen mentioned you by name. Uh, you guys connect yeah. while he was down there with you? Yeah, uh, the coach, uh, Coach Hypo, just had me tell him my story, my quick story mm. on how I got to Tennessee. So, yeah, that was pretty cool. Man, he's a big fella. I, I I can't wait to see you guys. Well, I hope to see you guys uh, locking horns uh, coming up here in just a little bit. But let, let's jump into it. Jamal, you guys know who Jamal is. He's uh, hanging around the channel all the time. Juco defensive lineman, Sierra College, going to be moving to Knoxville in May, uh, joining the team for summer workouts and then rolling into fall camp. But let's talk about uh, the orange and white visit because you were just here for the spring game. Kind of walk us through that. When, when did you get into town? Did you come in Thursday, uh, Friday? I got there. I got there Friday morning. I got there Friday morning. Uh, we had took a red eye and it was just like awful. It was awful. But we got a red eye. Got there. Talked to Coach Hypo, Coach G, all everybody. Um, we got some of my medical stuff done. Very sure for classes, stuff like that. We got everything all handled while we was out there too. It wasn't just a fun trip. It was a business trip as well. Yeah, like what was what is the difference in that? Because last time you were here back in December, that's an official visit. They're trying to recruit you. They're trying to get you to Tennessee. What was the difference then versus now? You're a part of this football team. Like you said, kind of a business trip. Yeah, it was more like business. Like, all right, you here? Let's get this done. So once you finally get here, you will have less to do. I got you. Well, you got to take in the spring game. Uh, we'll get into that in just a second. It, what else? What else did you get? In? What What did you do that's fun? Not biz, Not getting weighed and measured uh, and all that stuff. What did I do that was fun? Actually, just being around the team. I got to talk to a lot of players, um, telling me how their spring ball is going. Um, I got to go look at my apartment that I finally got. Um, got to do that. I looked at some furniture for some furniture that I wanted in my in my house. Got to look at um, some cars. That I'll, uh potentially going to get when I get there. So yeah, it was. I think that's what was fun for me. Our little son down there is growing up, Coach. He's growing up on us. I want to know what See, kind of car. What kind of what kind of car are you looking at? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. What kind of car was, are you looking uh, at? I know it was like a SRT. I'm not really like good with cars, but I know it was like a SRT. Okay. okay. What'd you think of the All spring right. game? Uh, getting to take it in and see uh, that defensive line. That, yeah, the defense, I I like the defensive line. Um, I think the spring game was very, like, it, was, it wasn't, it was like, offense-dominated defense and defense-dominated offense. That's, like, a little scary for me. But even though, like, it was well-rounded play, I like that. Somebody, I can't remember who, it might have been, been Jalen on Sunday. Somebody was talking about the environment. Oh, man, there's orange everywhere. People, are, it's like, oh, oh man. Yeah. You have that no idea. That, that, that was mild. That was mild. That's yeah. limited seating to season ticket holders only. That yeah, was it, was only, it was only 10,000 people, and it was like, like, yeah, it was a lot. Jump in there, Coach. Uh, what, what was your favorite thing about the day, Jamal? What, what was uh, like, you know, or the trip, just the trip in general? You can use the whole trip. Was getting, it a dinner actually, or was it? Getting to me, like, the fans actually – because you know me, like I'm very like I'm very active with with the fans mm-hmm. and stuff like that, and me being able to like keep my promises that I was going to take pictures with people and getting to interact with them, so that was pretty dope uh, for me. That's awesome, man. Yeah, the Tennessee fans will will definitely swoop you up and show you love, man. I I, yeah. I definitely fell in love with this fan base. Um, what what you get to meet. And hang out with the team much as well? Or was it more like uh, hanging out with the rest of the recruits most of the time? I actually uh, hung out with Coach G more than, like, uh, the players and oh. the, the uh, recruits. It was just me and Coach G talking a lot, actually. Talk is about that, good- that a little. Does, yeah, does Coach G crack jokes? Is he, yeah, is no, he kind of a serious he, guy? He did. <laughs> he did. He was like, uh, all right, now, don't get no bigger. We're going to put you with the whole line. I, like, I ain't getting no bigger. <laughs> we just put in a lot of money. He was like, "Yeah, I see you. Like, you know, you you're a social media guy. We, but you know, just just like just know for sure. Like, if okay, he was like, if 
you're going to be a social media guy, be willing to take the criticisms that the fans mm-hmm. are going to give you because they're going to love you. Mm-hmm. But if we get mm-hmm. down to that swamp and you jump uh, jump all sides on um, third or four, critical down, you, you might, it not, might be too pretty for you. So I was <laughs> like, Coach, I, I, I understand. I got you. I got you. So, yeah, he was just saying there you go. just be safe on, a, on the internet. That that's interesting yeah, yeah, yeah. because one of the one of the basketball players' moms was just talking about this recently, saying, you know, the the universities need to do a better job protecting you guys, the players, because you know, I and we're in a weird situation here on this channel too. Obviously, we're fans, we're ride or die, we're with you through thick and thin, but we're also going to be honest, right? It's it's right. our job to break down football and talk about what we see on the field. So you got to be real. Uh, but what what do you think about that? Like, have you had much experience with it? I mean, I know you're coming from JUCO. Uh, obviously, the the ball fans are going to love you right now, but. We've not taken that first snap um, yet. Me personally, um, it is different when when one of your family members is dis- disappointing you. So my dad like told me because I was just jacking up in high school, and he told me he was disappointed in me, and that was mm-hmm. probably one of the most hurtful things I ever heard in my life. So whatever like fans say, people say, right, I, it doesn't. It, I don't care. But if it comes from my dad, it, it, it's more personal than anything. So that's why I was telling coach like. Fans can say what they want. You know what I'm saying? They have opinions. I can't be mad mm-hmm. if somebody gave their opinion. You know, so, but I think something that hit home is my dad saying something more than the fans or coaches or anything like that. I was always trying to tell the coaches, like, you can talk to me however you want. It's not going to get me out of my game or make me want to transfer or anything like that. I'm fine. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. I like, uh, I like Coach G uh, weaponizing the fan base to to get you not to jump off sides too. I yeah, I appreciate yeah. that out of Coach. That's, <laughs> that's good. I'm gonna have to keep that in my notebook somewhere, man. That's that, that's awesome. Uh, cool, man. So, yeah, no, that's awesome that you got to hang out with Coach G. Um, yeah, don't don't get too much bigger. You don't 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 go to the offense. Don't go to the dark side, Jamal. That, yeah, that's no, not I'm good. not. Uh... Don't do that. <laughs> Uh, and also, he actually told me that I can like actually cool down on lifting weights because as oh. a lot of people know that I didn't start lifting weights until my my JUCO uh, my JUCO years, um, just because in high school my football team only had 15 players, so we we conditioned more than we lift weights. Sure. So um, yeah, and I'm like, well. SEC is like grown man that's trying to you know make something happen for their family. So I personally felt like I need to start lifting more, and I didn't actually maximize a lot of the uh, weights I've been li- lifting. And Coach G was just like, calm down on that, because once summer ball comes, uh, we're stripping all that down because we want yep. muscles to grow where we feel like you need to have it and you need to be in condition because it ain't no joke out there. So, Well, definitely listen to Coach on that because, you know, you get doing too many curls, yeah. you're looking yourself in the mirror. Yeah. Working on your pickup lines. Yeah, you got you watch that a little bit. I feel you. Curls feel to get you. the girls, right? Curls That's to get the right. girls. That's, That's right, what we do. Yeah. I mean, cool. <laughs> so so what are, what have your what like what have you been up to? Obviously you you committed uh back in December. And like, what's your life look like the last four months? I know you just mentioned you're about to watch some film with Coach G uh, here in just a few minutes. Uh, like, you talk about hitting the gym. I know you told us the last time you were on here, got to learn how to put that hand in the dirt. What are the yes. last? Like, what are the last four months look like for you? What have you been working on and up to? Um, a bunch of training, and I'm also surprised that Tennessee has a bunch of fans in California. It has a bunch of fans in California. Cause um, I go to like my local park down in Vacaville, and I have my little Tennessee shirt on. Not like really expecting anybody to like go balls or anything like that. I work out. Um, grandmothers, moms always come up to me. Can I get a picture? Can we take? A picture? <laughs> uh, I love Tennessee. I love Tennessee. I've been there. I uh, love. I want to go to the games one day. Take pictures with them. So it's like pretty cool that I can still have that out in California without even being in Tennessee, but my, like my like schedule, like since I've been, uh, since I committed has been workout, train, workout, stay film, train, workout, stay film, train. That's, that's all I've been doing right there. So you've been dancing a little bit too. Yeah. Uh, I've been seeing like on TikTok that, uh, a lot of famous people just like dancing. So I was like, you know what? Let me just learn how to dance. Let me learn how to. 
If you want to watch Jamal dance, I've got all of his links to socials, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, all that's in the description below. Go watch him dance. I saw on your Instagram story, what, what were you singing? What were you doing? You, you, you sing, you dance, you're a man of many talents. Yeah, no, I was um, I was at my team, uh, team bonding. And you know, my favorite thing is like, I like trolling people. So I was <laughs> singing um, on karaoke, I was singing, but I wasn't saying the right words. So a mm. lot of people were booing me, but it was just all funny games. Like I'm not a person that gets shy or nervous or anything like that. I just feel like it was fun. So I think that's why this fan base has fallen in love with you, man. Because you are yeah. you are you, you're not shy. You'll jump on. You love the interaction. You are a cheater at Madden, uh, but other than that, <laughs> other than that, I mean, He's I'm salty, you know, Jamal. He's salty. I'm not salty. <laughs> I'm just. I'm ready for EA Sports College football. So, uh, what about you? Have you have you had the opportunity to opt into that yet? Uh, no, I haven't. Um, Coach Hypo told me I should wait until I get to, to, uh, to Tennessee. So, uh, so I can start doing all that. Um, I, and I actually get a lot of questions on what I think my speed is going to be, uh, for the NCAA. <laughs> yeah. I, I look, man, I'm hoping I had an argument with my, uh, my cousin. I'm like, it should at least be like a 87, 89, something around there for the defensive line. And they're like, no way. Like, you're fast. You ain't that fast. I'm like, all right. Jamal, we got we we got you on Tuesday nights. Boogie plays NCAA, and you can super chat to increase your stats. So, uh, we'll chat, it. jump in there on Tuesday. Oh drop yeah, Jamal, super chat. We'll we'll get that speed in the 90s for you. Yeah. Okay. Cool, cool. What's that? What you yeah, got? My speed right now. Uh, you know what? Did was I don't is even he know. on the team? Well, I'm I'm do, I'm playing NCAA You're 14 like 10 revamp. seasons in. Yeah, right? so I don't when know the if new they one have you comes on there out. Yeah, yeah, when the new one comes out, uh, you'll you'll definitely be there, and I'm sure you'll go back to to Nico and and all the current okay. teams. Uh, what, okay, so what are y'all opinions on what should my speed be? I like your speed, man. I I I, I put you at 79. For, for defense alignment, which I think is high, okay. Jamal, which yeah. I think is very high. And that's as a freshman. So you're going to grow that because the, the, as you go through your cycle in the game and in real life, you know, you're going to get faster off that line. As you know, you're already starting to eat, sleep, dream football. So the more you do that, man, you're, you're going to get fast. I, you got a great burst, dude. It is one of the things I loved about your film. So I, I think it's going to be high. Okay, okay. Boogie? We know uh, man, don't make me answer this question. Hey, I'm going to make it 99. I, I, I need to be able <laughs> to win. Now, you know why we we got we to gotta put you on the spot now. Oh, my there you gosh. Go. 79 is like 86. What'd you say, Jamal? 86? 79? I what'd said 79. I, said, I, I think I wasn't big. For a D well. line, that's fast. Okay, the, okay. So the reason why I was saying like 87, 80, like 89, because I was like comparing myself to a lot of defense online and and and, 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 and edge rushers. That's what I was comparing myself to, not it's, overall like 89 is like a linebacker in the game, right, Boogie? Yeah, yeah. Probably, but probably. Like, I was a linebacker, you know? Yeah, yeah. There you go. There you go. Man, you, got that gonna, wide, you still got that wide receiver about. speed. You got that wide receiver speed. There you go. Yeah. Dude, Jalen was just on the show Sunday saying he runs a 4940. What's his speed? What, but I'll tell you what, his defensive film, he's fast. Like, when he's playing D-line, he's quick. He actually yeah, was telling me about that when we were talking. He, like, he got a bunch of film on defensive line. I said, look, yeah. that's that's dangerous. For how big that, he is, that's that's dangerous. He's that's a monster. The other, that's the other thing with speed. You know, you guys got you got guys that are fast, and then you got guys that are quick, right? Mm -hmm. So like yeah. with, with you, Jamal, like you're very quick off that line. I, there, I'd put you in the high 80s. Speed, fast, a little bit different of a rating for me, but maybe I'm just splitting, yeah. splitting hairs out here. I think I'm, my first, my first 10, 10 to 15 yards is. That's all you need, man. That's all I need. That's all, yeah. That's all you need. That's all you need. All right, we're gonna get you out the door for some film study here in just a second. But me and Coach Shea were talking last night during the NCAA stream. We got some rapid fire questions, and you can expand on these if you want. Uh, we're just coming up with something different. Uh, Coach Jay, you want to fire the first one off, and then we'll just kind of go back and forth and see where we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got the first one. All right, Jamal. So if, if, if you were a superhero, what superhero would you be? Uh, I'll be Spider Man. There you go. And hey, why? Hey, Let's go why. why yeah, why? Let's go why. Yeah. One, I'm why. very playful. Like, uh, I'm I'm a very serious person, but I'm not like one of those like very serious all the time. Um, 
I like hmm, how to say it. I love helping people. So that's very one. Cool. So so those two right there is I'm a very playful person. Um, I love helping people. Um, what else? And I, I kind of got lucky on uh, my ability to play football because I'm the only person that played football in my family. Nobody else oh. played football. I'm the only person that played football. And uh, see, I pretty I got lucky on my ability, which like Spider Man, he got lucky on his ability because yeah, he got yeah. Spider. So that's right. So, there you go. All right, let's go dream vacation. Ooh, my dream vacation. I would say probably go to Florida. I love the rain. I love the rain. And I plan on buying land in Florida so I can start, like, after football is over, live in Florida. So my perfect uh, vacation would be going to Florida, um, probably sitting on the beach and just enjoying life. That is my perfect vacation. And All right. throwing my phone somewhere so people not contacting me. That's funny. Is is active as you are sometimes you need that time without a phone all right coach jay fire another gotta one. Keep that phone away all right all right we gotta pick on you a little uh jamal you got a you got your you got a good pickup line what what's a what's a good <laughs> pickup line jamal you got a good pickup line like 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 you look at a girl's tag and go were you made in heaven or or you okay, know like one of them cheesy line. pickup lines hey you you're, you're about to move to god's I, I, country I'm you on the spot you're the, you're the <laughs> only 10 i see that's that's oh, the line. Right there. Dude, oh, there you go. Crazy. I'll let you steal it's, that one. It's it's crazy because this uh oh, this uh elderly lady she hit me with that. I was in Toledo and I had my Tennessee uh sir. She was like, "Oh, you the only ten I see." And I was, <laughs> there you go. Well, we we oh. just developed your pickup line. Now we, we got you. We got you. You're ready Dude, I always that. laugh because I'll be like at the gym and I'll see these teenage kids like trying to hit on the the girl and they're working out and I'm like, "Man, you're trying so all you got to do is walk up and say, how are you?'" You're in. Yeah. That's it. You're in. Yeah, it's over. It. That's all. You, just be nice, smile, say hello. That's yeah. it. So, so you don't have one in your back pocket. You're just gonna steal the old ladies. Um, me personally, uh, it would be very shocking to say, but um, I don't like, I don't go for women. I just uh, like stand to myself. That's it. women are complicated. Yes, so they you, are. You take your dang time there, Jamal. Yeah, Jay about got me in trouble. I was about to just fire off something yeah. that would have got me in trouble. Let's go to the next yeah, question. I, I be careful, but you yeah, were yeah. Let's move. Let's <laughs> let's move on. Let's move on. Uh, aliens, they exist or no? Um, I I don't know. Um, this is we are in a very strange timing in twenty twenty four. Uh, do they exist? I would probably say yes, and I think. Actually, no, nah, I'm not going to say that because that's a start something. Uh, I think they are pretty real. I think they're real. We need to have an unfiltered where we just don't stop ourselves from saying yeah. things we shouldn't. <laughs> All right, Coach Jay, fire another one off. We'll go a couple of more, and then we'll get Jamal out the door. He's okay, got to go cool. watch film with Co with Coach G. Yeah. All right, all right, I got you. I, we're going to stay on the, the love topic, though. If you were to date a Disney princess, which one would it be? A Disney princess. Um, was Zendaya? I'll let you choose like Pixar, or just just any animated. Growing up, it doesn't gotta be Disney. Oh, a Disney give you princess. Anything. I don't. Um, the only one I know is Sleeping Beauty. Well, Pocahontas. You, Come on, man. Pocahontas. Oh, oh. <laughs> All day, every day. That's the. I, that's the only one I know is Sleeping Beauty. I'm gonna say Little Mermaid, but that's kind of weird because she's half fish. Yeah, so she half. Yeah. That's a little odd. We had make we, a shark. I better go. <laughs> I'm I'm just gonna let it fly. We we were at Di we took our kids to Disney, and, and this was before my mom passed away, and she was with us, and the kids wanted to meet Pocahontas, and we're walking away from the thing, and my mom's like, "Well, <laughs> pretty sure my son liked Pocahontas more than my grandchildren did." I never been. Oh, you gotta oh, go, man. Yeah, you especially if go. you like Florida, man. Go down there, rent a house, go to Disney. Uh, yeah. It's fun. It's fun. Uh, let's I see. One more. One more. Oh, this is, is Coach Jay's asking about nothing but women. Uh, childhood hero. Let's get a little sentimental. Oh. Childhood hero and why? Uh, kind of. Okay. Get into this um, one. my my childhood hero. Is it? This is a wait. Are you asking for like a character or a person? No, person, 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 person. Um, I would say, I would say it have to be uh, my dad, and. It's kind of like a bad, it was like a little negative in a, in a positive way. Uh, my dad was a very hardworking man. Um, 
he didn't he didn't uh, take anything. Well, he wasn't given anything, and like he always worked for everything he he had gotten. Um, he didn't he wasn't really the type to 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 beg for anything or ask for help or anything like that. Um, but he also made uh, poor decisions in life that uh, that kind of messed him up going forward in life. And I took that to upon myself, like, I don't want to be like that. I don't want to mm. end up in these type of situations. I don't want to, um, yeah, end up in certain situations that he ended up in. So I was like, you know what? Let me turn my life around or not being uh, homeless or uh, struggling and pay, pay your rent and stuff like that. So I just wanted, I put myself in a, a different environment, which was football. Like I said, I was the only person that played football, and I feel like I can be successful at football. So I put myself in that situation. I, I like it, man. I like it. Man, you, sometimes yeah. people come from rough backgrounds, and it's like mm-hmm. it, it's so hard to get out of that cycle if that's what you're yeah. in, right? But you can respond yeah. two ways, and it's it's so easy to kind of go down this this wrong path. But I, I love it, man. I love I love that story. Uh, and I appreciate you getting a little personal with us there. I know you got film to watch. Yeah. You're always welcome on this channel, man. You're you're an extended part of the Talking Vols family. Uh, when that new game comes out, oh, we got a rematch coming. <laughs> I know, uh, I know your game. We got a rematch coming. We're gonna have some fun, man. But uh, best of luck with your move to Knoxville. Once you get here, man, you start putting in work. You need somebody to talk to. You need to go grab a, a meal. You need somebody to pick up a meal for you. Uh, hit us up, man. The Talking Vols family has your back. Well, right. We're ride or die. So. Appreciate you coming on, brother. Everybody go show Jamal some love. Hit up his social medias in the description below. Uh, anything you yeah. want to say to Vol Nation on the way out the door? Yes. Um, any any men or, or women that loves to play Madden, I am having my own franchise starting tonight. Uh-oh. So you guys Ooh. can contact me on Instagram or Twitter. If you want to join the franchise, you can. Um, yes, yeah, open to anybody. So, yep. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Yep. He does cheat though. Be cu- be careful, chat. He cheats. <laughs> yeah, so you got to be you got to be careful with that. <laughs> yeah, you know what? We just got we just got bamboozled, Coach Jay. I got to watch film with Coach G. I'm starting yeah. a Madden I Dynasty. Know, I'm out the door. Like we just got lied to. <laughs> All right, brother. We appreciate you coming on, man. We got you back. You need anything? You know how to get in touch with us. But we appreciate you, brother. Sure. All appreciate right, have a good night. You got to take care. All right, guys, the link is out. This is a fan call-in show. This is your show. Uh, I don't know if you guys want to talk about the orange and white game. You want to talk about spring camp. You want to talk about the transfer portal. Whatever you guys want to get into, uh, jump in here, and we're going to get into it. As always, do me a favor and smash the thumbs up. That helps the channel. We would appreciate it. Uh, Also, blast this thing out, man. Put it on Twitter, Facebook. Let people know we are live. Let's try to grow this chat. Let's have a good time uh, tonight. Uh, Coach, what? What? It, I don't. I don't know how much you've been following the transfer portal stuff. Uh, it was supposed to be chaos. It was going to be complete chaos. Not really happened. We've had uh, Elijah Herring into the portal, uh, but that was it. Is Coach Jay still here? Or is he frozen? Am I? Fro- Can you hear me? Yeah, you're good. I just you're just frozen. So I don't know. Why I'm frozen. Yeah. All right. Uh, sorry, I was a little distracted by that. Uh, what, what was the question? But sorry, I was looking at Have my frozen. A frozen face there. I guess let's go, let's spin it this way. I uh, actually I recorded locked on balls. Kaner texts me. He's like, "Hey man, short notice. Are you free? Like right now? I'm just sitting in the recliner. I got nothing to do." We were talking about the portal and how everybody thought it was going to be chaotic. And I asked him. I said, "Do you think maybe you know Tennessee? The only casualty is Elijah Herring. Do you think maybe that speaks to the culture at Tennessee because that wide receiver room's deep. Nobody's entered the portal yet." Yeah, I think it definitely speaks to the culture at Tennessee. I, I've been saying that for a couple. I think it's huge that um, we've had the. I mean, really, if you look at it, when Pruitt left, we had a ton of transfers. But really, since then, we talked about it. Like the transfers of people we want to hang on to have been small. Haven't been you know that large at all. I think it's a, a huge. Huge kudos deserve to be served to this coaching staff uh, when it comes to the transfer portal. No doubt about it. Uh, they've kept their strong, and I think they're going to continue to to do so. Everybody's talking about Martinez. Did, did you keep up with that today, Damian Martinez? Last night, everybody in the chat's blowing me up saying, Boogie, Damian Martinez just put it out on Twitter. Hayes Fawcett dropped the graphic. He's going to be visiting Tennessee. 
I get done with the stream. I wake up this morning. I knew that was going to be my video, but Austin Price put it out last night that he that visit was never scheduled. That visit was never booked. So, you know, I still dropped the video, and I talked about Martinez in the portal. I talked about the running back room, talked about some of the culture and you know, issues that could create by adding somebody. And then I talked about how Damian Martinez was not taking that visit. Later, it was confirmed he's not taking that visit. What do you, what do you think about that? You think, that, you know, a lot of times we say, oh, they're playing Tennessee for NIL leverage. That sounds like exactly what Damian Martinez was doing. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And I think the balls kind of put their foot in the dirt. Not going to have it, which is why it came out today that he – he wasn't going to be a visitor at all. It's just a game. I don't think this coaching staff is, is willing to play. And uh, I think as it goes along, you know, it will show that this staff is frugal. But hey, if you're in that 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 money position, right, ball position, we're going to pay you. So um, I think it all just a matter of optimization of what we're looking for in the talent level as well. Like, like, what what do you think about the running back room? Because I've been arguing with people, and not really arguing, debating is probably a better word. It's not been hostile. It's people giving their opinion. And that's what I love about this channel. I love when somebody comes at me and says, I, I disagree for this reason. And we can have a conversation instead of just, well, you're an idiot. We don't need a running back. I like the back and forth debate. I'm still in the camp of we, we, need, we need a running back. And, and my argument, first, do you think, you, do you think we need a running back? I, yeah, I think we need a depth. And I think I said the other night, I, it doesn't necessarily have to be a starter, but I think you need a solid depth piece either way. And it could be, in my opinion, hey, maybe it's like a Division two guy. You know, maybe it's like a, a guy that went to, you know, Dakota State or Montana, one of those real competitive smaller schools. And it's year four and, you know, go out there and show what they can do in their final year and maybe get to the NFL. I think that's kind of the kid you're looking for. Someone that's not going to step on the youth, but it's going to bring value to both, a valuable team if there's an injury. I just think, you know, the arg- the counter argument I keep getting is that Peyton Lewis is going to be fine. Peyton Lewis has not even participated in a college football practice. He has not participated in a practice. And people are telling me that he's going to be fine. And then, you know, Khalifa Keith. Oh, he's a stud, man. People comparing him to Alabama running backs. I'm like, the guy averages two yards a carry on 10 carries. And I, I get it. Like some somebody's comment, and I, I, I didn't respond to it. Maybe I will after, after this stream. Their comment was, at one point, Dylan Sampson wasn't proven, right, until he got the opportunity to prove himself. And and I'm hoping more than anything that Deshaun Bishop, Khalifa Keith, proved me wrong. My, my argument is people that think Cam Seldon's fine. Cam Seldon's out till October. That's that's not fine. That is not, oh, we're okay. We'll just wait till October to have our second string running back. And not even second string. It's 1A, 1B. And then Peyton Lewis, again, you've not even been through practice yet. Yeah, I mean – that's just the reality is you don't know if he's going to – let me first say this. I like Peyton Lewis's film a lot. Go check out the breakdown if you haven't. Um, you don't know Hawk yet. You don't know how he's going to pick up the offense yet. Do I think he's going to be fine at running through the tackles and, and open, you know, open holes and things like that? Sure. Uh, do I trust him when a defense adjusts late? When an LSU safety drops down into zero, fades off, pops back in, comes off the corner and tears off head and hooker's head. I trust you in that situation. I don't know that I trust you yet because I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it in practice. I haven't seen it on the field. I haven't seen it anywhere yet. So uh, we'll find out, you know, as you get along, but I think you need a depth piece. Ron the Don is in the house. Maybe he'll yell at me because he's always bringing the positivity. Yeah. What, what are your thoughts, Ron, on, on the running back room? Well, I mean, we could use another running back, but you know, the type of guy I want, I mean, he's have about what two forty or two hundred and fifty pounds. Mm. I'm, looking to, I'm looking for another Jamal Lewis kind of type, just to be ready because but it's kind of hard because check this out. If the offense does what it's supposed to do, I mean, not that we don't need a running back. They will be so fluent. They will be so efficient. A running back is just like sprinkles on top of the cake. That's what's going to happen. And that's what I'm looking at, you know. I mean, 
we got some dogs back there, but just to have another Jamal Lewis type with another 30, 40 pounds when we give him the ball, they know what we're going to do and they can't stop it. I think, right. that, I think that's what people want out of Khalifa Keith. And again, I hope he proves me wrong. I know people like to give me a hard time. Nelson's always giving me a hard time about not liking Khalifa Keith. It's not that I don't like him. It's just when I saw his film, I'm like, I don't think this guy is elite. I don't think he's an SEC running back. I hope he, I hope he proves me wrong. And everybody, everybody's laughing like McCall, like McAllen Castles when I said, I don't know if this guy's elite or not. He's coming from UC Davis. I don't know how great he is. We're going to find out. McAllen Castles was pretty dang good for this football team. Uh, you know, Again, when I was on with Kaner, that show's going to drop tomorrow. Tune in to Locked On Vols, bright and early tomorrow morning. Actually, it usually drops at, at midnight. Uh, and he said, what, 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 would I do? what do I think need, we need to add? And I said, of course, a running back. So I'm going to ask you the question, Ron the Don. You, you can add whatever you want. You said you wanted a Jamal Lewis type of running back. If you could re- create a player, what player in position would you create that you think would take this team to the next level when you look at depth or you look at the starters, wherever you wherever you want to add a player, you can add a player. Mm, well, I mean, I know the, the D line's looking pretty good. But if I can get me a, a Albert Hainsworth to reincarnate somebody who's gonna probably get thrown out maybe like in the third quarter. Because he like <laughs> picked up the quarterback and threw him into the stands. And that's that's me. That's 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 home base for me because you know, you want a certain amount of fear. When your team, when their team comes out on the field, you know, you want somebody that's going to absolutely say, we have to watch him. Mm. They can change the whole offensive scheme to watch and block him because that's what we need. Uh, that's what I'm on, man, because like I say, we got some guys out there, but I still have some yet. I need me one linebacker to just knock a man down. Trip his pants leg back and just, <laughs> just, just boom, man. Let him know that this is Tennessee. Y'all didn't come here to play around. We, we, we a natty bound. We're going to take a few bones with us, you know. So, so you want like a James Pierce, but on the interior. Like yes. a, a guy that can change a game. Like our yeah. defensive, our, our, I think the interior is pretty dang good, but there's not that dog. There's not that, not a, I'm, I shouldn't even use the word elite, but get game changer maybe, game changer. That's what you're looking for. Yeah, Roger Simmons, he was he was good at that, and, and uh, we just need. I mean, he's still good. We need someone just, just a little bit more mean, a little bit more nastier. Because the thing is, you know, <laughs> what did Bush Jones say? <laughs> Have to lose the game before we win the game. I want us <laughs> to win the game before we even sit on the field. I want the offense and the defense of the other team to be scared to come out the locker room. I want them to be looking and saying, well, "Did all of them show up?" <laughs> That's what I want because it's man. This is Tennessee football, but we have waited for this for so long. And long as the chips are starting to fall in order, yeah, that's what I want. I want. It, I want it to be total domination. I don't hear nobody. But you just lost twenty. Th- no, no, no. We are kicking y'all butts today. We're gonna kick your butts tomorrow. And when we send up on that podium with a national championships trophy in our hand, I want no one to feel any kind of regret. No. We earn it, we deserve it, and that's what we come to get. That is that is our mode. How, how like man, when I look, I look at this team for twenty twenty four. I'm getting more and more excited. And again, Kaner saying, "Who would you add?" I'm like, I, I would add a running back. I would add a left guard, and I would maybe add a body or two in the secondary. Other, other than that, this, this football team, they've got some weapons, man. Offensively, defensively. Again, Tim Banks, best defensive line in the country. So my my concerns in the secondary, and, and I like the athleticism there. I'm a little concerned about the depth. I think we've got good linebackers. I think your defensive line is going to make your linebackers better. They're going to make your secondary better. I think our offense is going to look better than 2022. I, I think, you know, they showed little wrinkles in the spring game that I liked using the middle of the field. You know, they used some slant routes. They 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 did some different things. I liked, you know, Deshaun Bishop, a guy that I'm 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 – Critical of, I like the way they moved him to the slot, and and they gave him an opportunity, right, to make a play as a wideout, and he made a play, made a guy miss, picked up like 20, 30 yards. Like, I'm, I'm excited about this team, and I just think this 
is the dang year, man. I think we've got enough talent to go out and compete. I, I look at the schedule. You beat Oklahoma. I think you're going to beat Florida. And then you're going to roll into the second half of the season at 6-0. and Alabama comes to town. You're undefeated. You, look, it's going to be the same thing as 2022. College game day is going to be on campus. College game day, I don't know, maybe Florida sucks. Maybe they lose three games before Tennessee even plays them. But when you've got these big matchups, game day is going to be in town. Recruits are going to be in town. The the You, you go land go land Jalen Matthews. Go land David Sanders. Go, go land some of these elite offensive linemen, and let's build a freaking top five class in the class of 2025. Let's make a college football playoff appearance and then guess what ron the don we're, we're already back tennessee is already freaking back but but we're gonna get to that elite status that's when you start closing the gap on the georgias i think we've already closed it on florida and alabama i think we've already closed it i i i, I like tennessee I, give me the balls over florida give me the balls over alabama that we're back man we're back i, I swear i think this is the year that we all look back on and say that's when Tennessee took the next step. Sermon over. Everybody have a nice Sunday. Go enjoy lunch with your families. <laughs> I had that's a great time. <laughs> Coach, yeah, you look great, man. Crystal clear. I know, right? Like, man, I don't know what was going on. I, I, I had to reboot. But, uh, yeah, my computer feels like 98. Everything's, everything's working well. Um, <clears throat> uh, can I build a player? Any player I want? Yeah, let's go. Same question. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I want to build a safety man. I want. I'm building Eric Berry, man. If, if I could just pluck someone out of history and drop them on this team, it'd be Eric Berry. It, it, it'd be no question about it. Can you imagine a secondary with Eric Berry and Boo Carter in it? Mm. Like throw Eric Berry at star, Boo Carter at safety, mm. Ricky Gibson at cornerback. Maybe mm -hmm. not. Mm -hmm. Jermon McCoy at the other corner. Yeah, that'd be that'd be awful dangerous. But I'll tell you what, man. I I know there's been some other uh, channels in in some uh, certain people in volunteer media that uh, kind of picked the secondary apart. I, I thought the starting cornerbacks played as advertised in the spring game. I really do believe that. It, yeah, I I do. I just yeah. Because look at the I guys they that played got well. Beat. It was Jordan Matthews that got beat. It was McMurray that got beat. Like, yep. I think, I think, but, but again, it just goes back to depth, man. That, that's, that's how we take the next step, right? I mean, don't you agree? It's like if, if, if Jermaud McCoy goes down, you got to have that next guy ready. And look at the wide receiver room. That wide receiver room is there. That defensive line is there. The linebackers, I think, are pretty freaking close to being there. Jeremiah T. Lander is a dude, man. Like, I, like, and again, Kudos to Coach Jay. Coach Jay called it. He called it with Jeremiah T. Lander. He called it with Jordan Ross. He's called like one day you guys will say, "Oh, Coach Jay knows what he's talking about." But I, I think we're so we're, we're there in so many position groups, and we still got a couple that we got to get there. Offensive line, yep. we got to get there. But I, I think this class of twenty five. I like the class of twenty four. I think this class of twenty five has the potential to be really, really good. I I, I think, man, gosh. I, I'm not some insider, but if if I had to say right now who is David Sanders leaning towards, give me the Vols. Give me the Vols. Jalen Matthews, give me the Vols. What's the kid? What's the kid that uh, grew up the Tennessee fan? Why is his name skipping? Uh, it's it's Harry. skipping my head. Yes, get if Tennessee can land David Sanders, Jalen Matthews. Is it Perry? Is that his name? I feel like it's Perry. Why am I having wrong. a complete – Josh Petty. Uh, Josh Petty. Josh Petty. Lord have mercy. Very close. That was close. <laughs> if you land David Sanders, Jalen Matthews, and Josh Petty, yeah, the chat's, the chat's like – They're eating the slides. They're like, what are you guys talking about? Quit faking. You bunch of idiots. Guys, you yeah, like, <laughs> like when, when AP put out the tweet, like I guess it was last week, about Petty and saying, hey, grew up a Tennessee fan, don't sleep on this one. AP's the best in the business. He knows what he's talking about. And it's like mm -hmm. Tennessee is in it. And then he he doubled down in the Monday night chat. So there's been a lot of good dialogue lately there. And and this is something me I don't remember if me and Kaner talked about this on air. This may have been off air. I'm gonna say it anyway. He said that Tennessee's recruiting him as a guard. So you get Matthews and Sanders oh. as your tackles, and then you slide Petty in at guard. And I wonder if that's why maybe some of the conversations stopped because Tennessee wants him to be a guard, and maybe he wants that that contract as a tackle. I don't know. 
We just got a few position groups we got to get there. Let me hit a super chat real quick. Uh, Timothy McGee for five says, we need a Reggie White. I know Ron the Don's going to like that. Yeah. That's what – I was at the game, Ron the Don. I was at the game when Albert Hainsworth stepped on the player's head. I was at that game in the NFL. Like, like I couldn't tell. Like, there was the scrum or whatever. And I was like, what's going on? And then I get home and we watch it on sports. And I'm like, he stepped on a man's head. That, that's what happened. And I was there for it. I was there for it. Uh, Jamie French too. Yeah, let's get Jamie French in the boat. That that's again wide receivers recruiting wise. Same thing, man. Just deep, 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 deep. Yeah, I don't understand why anybody would come up with anything talking about like the secondary was not as well. Look who they're playing against. We we yeah. have a, a a top tier wide receiver core. What do you expect those guys? And I did none of them like get like super duper beat. They were still, I would say, within two yards of the play at worst. It was still there. So, but look who we got back there, man. I mean, it's like Jalen Hyatt 2.5. We, I mean, we got him back there. What do you expect him to do? Nobody complaining about Mike Tyson knocking out Trevor Burbank. Oh, Trevor, if I get you door, you're going to come and punch. No, Mike Tyson knocked him out. Guess what he's supposed to do? These wide receivers are ready. They are competing. They're going to go in the field. And I don't care who's back there in the secondary. I hope our guys do great in the secondary. But our wide receiver core is awesome. They're going to be dynamic. They're going to be fighting with playing time on the bench. I mean, I mean, not to say they were wishing anything bad on another player, but one player goes out, another player is going to step up. I mean, that's what's supposed to happen. So, yeah, our wide receiver crew did their job. Secondary, they can get a little bit better, but look at who they're playing against you know, in, in, in the practices. Yeah. But, and it, yeah, it's the the cliche iron sharpens iron, right? But guess what? When you're playing against that elite wide receiver group, it's like it's like the young offensive lineman man going against this defensive line. And and I loved having Jalen on Sunday and asking him, and he's like, "I want to play against that elite defensive line. It's going to make me better." Uh, that's the type of dudes we need, man. And it just seems like every guy that comes on here and me and Coach Jay interview, they all have that same mind, mindset, that competitive drive. Coach, if we had anybody on that wasn't well spoken, wasn't respectful, wasn't like they're always like, "Yes, sir," "No, sir," I'm like, "Man, just call 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 us Boogie and Coach." Like, we don't we don't need the respect put on our names. Yeah, no. Every hey, everyone's been great. They've been great kids. I shoot, I think I said it not a couple couple maybe two interviews ago, or maybe it was the last one. I don't know, but they all start to a, run together. There's a theme, man. There's a theme with those kids. They're good kids. They're good kids. Um, they care. They they're they're um, very self aware. It, it's hard to find. I, I don't know about you guys, but I, I I was like I could think deep about things at that age, but I don't know how self aware I was. You know, like looking inward and thinking. You know, like Jamal made the comment about, "Hey, I, I actively don't want to make these mistakes." And you know, uh, a couple of these comments you've heard these kids make. They're very self aware of of where they are in life and the work they need to put in and, um, you know, where they want to go. Uh, you can see that this staff has put a high, high dollar amount on value on that, on that, you know, feature for these kids to have. They're all great kids. And if you're going to play games and not be honest, guess what? Then you can't even come visit here like Martinez, right? You're not even welcome to do that because uh, we're going to be honest with you. You know, if you're hearing, there was probably a conversation, guys, right? You're crazy if you think there wasn't a conversation between Hypel and Herring. And he, they said, okay, hey, look, you're going to get playing time. You're going to be on the two deep, right? Or or you're going to be in the rotation. But we can't give you the playing. This is the reality of the situation. This is the rotation. And if you feel like you can get it somewhere else, get it somewhere else, man. Good luck to you. And that's the kind of situation if i were a young player now think about it guys put yourself in these kids situation do you want to go to a school that isn't honest with you that bs's you that puts you through crap that will pick up any jerk off any geek off the street to come in and play running back and he's out drinking and driving messing around smoking dope not giving a crap about nothing or or do you want an environment where you know, they're going to care about you. They're going to tell you the truth. And if, if this fit isn't good for you, they're going to be honest with you and tell you about it. You can go get that fit. You can go get that money somewhere else. That's the kind of environment I want to be in. That's a healthy environment. And 
And man, I just can't say enough good things about what Hypo's done building that environment. It's, uh, and it's not an easy thing to do. Nick Saban wasn't able to do it. So what, what does that say, man? That, that tells you something right there. Yeah, I mean, especially with the portal, with NIL, it's hard to build that culture. And I, I say it, I say it in almost every portal video I make, man. It's it's easy for us as fans to go, uh, well, I see Damian Martinez, and I see how many yards he ran for, and I know that this offense is very running back friendly, with with the 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 numbers advantage that you can get in the box a lot, and it's like get, get drop the bag. That's not my money. I'm spending other people's money because I want the elite running back. Meanwhile, your your left tackle needs X amount. Your quarterback needs X amount. Uh, your your center needs X amount. All like all these COVID seniors that came back. You don't think those NIL deals are worth something? It, man, it's it's. I know we talk about a salary cap is probably needed in college football at this point. Mm-hmm. Guess what? Sure. It's it's. It's already there, and it's just in place by the coaching staff. They know what they can spend, and they're trying to balance it. And uh, you know, I say all the time what they're gonna they're gonna spend the money on. You guys already know what they're gonna spend the money on. That's that's the game of football, and running back is just not a position that you're gonna go out there and overpay for. I don't, I don't think you need to. I, my concern is not. I, I was okay with the running back room when I thought it was going to be Dylan Sampson, Cam Seldon, and I thought Peyton Lewis, if he went through spring, would probably be that third string running back. I was okay with that. The problem is you got two dudes that really needed spring camp. One of them's not going to be back till October, and the other one will be ready for summer workouts, but he's a true freshman. That that concerns me. It concerns me. Uh, let me hit a super chat real quick. Uh, Timothy McGee for another five. Appreciate you, Timothy. Timothy carrying the load tonight. We appreciate you, brother. Uh, it would be different if our secondary could jam up the wide receivers and not play off 10 yards. Thank you, Timothy, for the super chat. Uh, we appreciate that, brother. Uh, the link is out for Talking Balls Gold and Higher. Uh, we'll go about an hour. You guys want the show to keep rolling? Jump on here and let's have some conversations. What do you think, Ron? Should I go down yeah. one level? Should I go down to the to the Talking Balls faithful right. level? Hey, no, sure, no. sure. Do whatever you like, but I want to. I want to give a little a, a brief PSA. Uh, JD Pickell. Last year, I told y'all that uh, when Nico was sitting on the sidelines watching Joe Milton do his thing, that as an active cerebral football player, Nico is watching every play, even though he's not on the field. He is participating in his mind on every play, and that man just said it two weeks ago about Nico. Ain't nothing changed, JD. Nico's Nico. And the great thing about all of this, what I'm trying to say is the players that you have on here, Boogie, that's coming here or thinking about coming here, they're all cerebral players as well. Mm-hmm. The the NFL announcers them, oh, this guy here, Joe Smart, he's from Harvard, really. How smart <laughs> he is. We're getting cerebral players to play at Tennessee, which means they're gonna know their assignments. They can adapt to changes on the field while they're playing. This team is just going to get better and better. If we can keep on trying to choose those type of players, wherever those players come to Tennessee, man, it's it, uh, our elite status will be super duper elite. And that's what I want. I mean, yeah, anybody can grab a ball and run out of the field. Ooh, I got the ball. I got the ball. You need somebody who may, if they don't get the ball, the word to block, the word to line up at on the field. That that means everything when the play breaks down. Somebody has to think on their feet. Nico can do it. But we need other players around him who do the exact same thing. These guys you got coming in here, Boogie, and, and talking to them, they have that. You can you can hear the way he speak about their assignment and what they're doing, how they're practicing. All that stuff counts to national championships. That's where it starts. Hey, man. I'm, I, yeah, I get fired up. Ron Don fires me up. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm going to hit somebody. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> this is this is Ron the Don's audition. This isn't a fan call. It's just talking balls live. Well, Ron the Your Don, host, baby. Boogie Bentley, Coach Jay, Ron the Don. Guys, smash the thumbs up. We would appreciate it. Uh, go check out our merchandise, man. I, I don't I, I, I don't know. I feel like I get yelled at for shilling sometimes, but I feel like I don't shill anywhere near as much as I used to. Uh, but you guys can go check out our merchandise. I love this shirt. I like it. And then when I saw Coach Rice, no, it was uh, Rocky Top Tom. Where the heck is Rocky Top Tom? Where is Tom? You know what, Coach Jay? 
He's scared. Because the showdown is next Wednesday. I'm, I'm, I'm ready. It's, it's time for him to disappear. He's scared. I anyway, got my I, player. I, I'm ready. I'm ready. Tom was rocking this shirt the other day, and I love it. It looks clean. Go check it out. Bonfire.com slash store slash Talking Balls. We got some new merch we're going to roll out soon. Kevin is working on it. Uh, you Tuesday night cats will like it. Uh, DJ Boogie will be in the house. It's it it's I love it. It's so funny. The shirt is so funny. Uh, but all the favorites are there. The chosen one, Cult of Eight. Uh, we've also got the Talking Balls letter theme shirt. I like that one as well. I love that design. It's a clean look. Cult member, like is, is are you wearing it now? Yeah, Coach Jay's wearing it right now. No, you're not. You wore it. Uh, when did you wear it? Yeah, you wore know. it Sunday night. He wore it Sunday night. Go check it out. Bonfire.com slash store. Slash Talking Balls. The link is in the description below. We appreciate all you guys and all the support picking up the merchandise. Uh, coin toss. Ron the Dawn. Yeah. Take us somewhere. What? 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 What else? What else? Uh, any? Well, what, what are your overall thoughts of spring? I guess. Oh, okay. Well, let me tell you about the, the about the spring game, and uh, I guess I look at it not the whole play. What I check out is like the first three seconds of the play. When the ball is height, I'm looking at where is everybody, the assignments and the alignments. In the confinements, who is doing what at what particular time? You got three seconds. I mean, after that, I mean, you know, there's not hey, you know, somebody's not going hog wall at their quarterback. But for those first three seconds, you can see if people are put in the proper place, if they're handling their assignment and they're trying to get themselves ready to make a play. Now, a lot of them pulled up, as you know, with the quarterback, but they were still in the proper place. And what happened when I looked at it for the first three seconds, everything looked smooth. Look kind of effortless. Now these are the backups of the backups, and some people trying to get playing time. So I look at that. I say, hey, they they really got themselves in the proper position, which made me feel good because I'm like, all right, the guys that are gonna be there and actually doing that job, they know exactly what they have to do, and they're gonna complete the mission. If that be the case, that's what I was really liking about the spring game. I mean, you know, at the at the three seconds, yeah, well, all right, yeah, okay, they kind of they kind of backed off, kind of ease up. But those first three seconds. That's what I look for to see where they're at, what they're doing, how they completed their assignment. If they just, that's what the case was. There you go. Uh, there you let's go. see here. Ginger for five. Appreciate the super chest. As kickers went one, two, three. Gilbert, Turbyville, Carver, and Gilbert made the 45 at the end. Gilbert as place kicker number one. Did Turbyville, did Turbyville kick off last year? Is that like, I know people like to talk about kickers. I don't, I, I, you, I don't pay attention to a kicker until he misses one or he beats Alabama for the first time in 15 years. Then I pay attention to that kicker. Otherwise, I'm not really paying that much attention. Uh, I, I swear I think last year that Turbyville kicked off is what happened. But thank you, Ginger, for the super Sounds chat. Right. Uh, we'll see what happens with Gilbert. Uh, I'm sorry. I, Ginger, I'm a horrible person. I should uh, show more respect for the kickers because uh, they are a part of this football team. Did you guys see this? I love. I, I, I don't know if it's out yet. I don't think it's out yet. Uh, you're not going to want to miss this dropping next week. All right, this is coming out next week. Do you guys watch the juice? Surely, the yes. you guys watch the juice. Yeah, yeah, sure. Ron, do yeah, you watch it? Uh, the juice. <laughs> this is so Tennessee. I think it, it, they put posted everywhere. It's on Twitter, Instagram. Uh, it's on their YouTube channel. It's like a little mini mini episode. Like they did oh. one that kind of really focused around Darrell Sims. They did one that really kind of focused around Rodney Garner. And it's like a little. 10-minute documentary giving you an inside look at Tennessee football practice, meetings, all that type of stuff. Yeah. Uh, this is the teaser for the one that's going to drop next week. I like it. Let's watch Nico. Good. Let's go. Stay. Go. Hey, yeah. So it's on. No, it's so go real, good real, good catch. Go make plays tonight. <laughs> Third read. Oh, you saw that a lot in the spring game. Yeah. Let's go, boy. Let's go, boy. Let's go, boy. Let's go, boy. Yeah. Oh, got the handshake down. Go make plays. Gotta get go that back handshake down. Go back and watch this. Here we go. One, One two, two, three. three. <laughs> One, that might have even been the fourth. Wait, one, one, two, two three. three. Uh, yeah, it was third. It's hard. To, it's hard to see. It could oh, possibly. Yeah. It could possibly be four. T t like, just speak on that. Like, you, you have been saying this for I don't know how many 
it's over a year at this point on the channel. Why why is Nico him? How, why, why why am I sitting here so confident about 2024? I I, I truly believe. I, I truly think this offense is going to be better than the one in 2022. Why, why do you have so much confidence? He he goes through his progressions quickly and he doesn't second guess his analytics of his progressions. Uh this was a problem for Joe. Um he would go through his progressions and you could tell he was second guessing his reads. Uh, oftentimes he would go back to his first read between his second read back to his first read instead of one, two, three. Well, let's say you have, let's just say you have three for the sake of the right now. Uh, it, it's one, two, three, one. Joe would do something like one, two, one, three, one. It, it sounds small, but man, seconds are everything on a football field, especially for a quarterback. Um, it's the difference between something being covered up. It's the difference between everything. And guess what? If you're second guessing yourself, it's hard to get a rhythm. It's hard for your receivers to get a rhythm. People talked about the receivers having drops all year. They do. Was it part of the problem? Sure. I, I never felt like those wide receivers were given a fair chance to get into a steady rhythm. They never knew when the ball was coming. So imagine you're supposed to get the ball at a certain time, right? It's an option route. When this reads there, you know that ball's coming because they made the wrong move. You made the right move. Ball's coming. Now the ball's not there. Now you're wondering, where's the ball? Now you run it again. Ball didn't come. Now you run it again. The ball sailed. Now you don't see the ball again for five more series. Now you run that play again. Ball's not there. Now you run it again. All of a sudden, it's a little behind you for a hard catch. It's tough, man. It's tough to get a rhythm that way. Offense is about rhythm and tempo, and it's tough to do. Uh, this is something Nico can help in greatly. He has great tempo. Uh, we've all seen his pocket awareness. Uh, he can fly through those progressions quickly. If we just talk about the first play of the game, it, it, it was a sack of the spring game, right? It was a sack play. I, we probably don't have it, but if you were to watch it, they've got double coverage against twins to the top of the screen right and they've got a safety there they bring a man into motion so they switch the coverage the back the weak side safety drops back into coverage they've got everything covered up so the only thing nico could have done is make the third read to the weak side of the field well he was going there but dane davis gave up gave up a gap in his face the only thing you can do in that situation is throw the ball away or run it. Nico is great at running the football. Had he attempted that, Coach Heupel probably would have liked, likely taken off of his head for trying to trying to do anything other than just just uh, throw the ball away or hold it. But uh, those progressions, those reads are insanely quick for him. He's got a lot of uh, just that football IQ to go along with Twitch, to go along with the big arm, to go along with everything, man. He's just got that full package. There's not many times as a coach uh, you see a kid come along who can do everything. And uh, when you do get those, you you mark them, right? You, you, they mean something. And when you see one up close and you know and you've seen it, it, it it's special, man. I I talk about it a little bit. I got to see Nico uh, a couple times in high school, but uh, the last time I got to see him, and I know it's high school, I'm aware, but man, they sat him seven minutes into the second quarter because he'd put up 54 points. Like, that's scary. And Who's a better quarterback, just, Nico or him? He was just dissecting. Who's a better, Who's a better uh, quarterback? To, Putting you on the spot. I know my answer, and I think yours is the same, and you're scared to say it. Do you want me to just answer, and you can just sit there quietly? Nah, it, it, to me, it's Nico, but he you got to prove it, man. I, I said it all last year, man. It doesn't mean crap unless you prove it on the grass in the Southeastern Conference. But guess That's what? He's it, about man. to. He's about yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, and I believe that. I believe that with every bit of my heart, and, and when he does, then, yeah, I can say uh, he was, but until he does, maybe I got to give it to Hendon, but – for me, Nico's got twice the ceiling, and that's a big statement. I don't say that lightly. I have a lot of respect for what Hendon did, a lot of respect. And um, look, Hendon led 
the most successful offense in Tennessee history. Yep. Full stop, man. You ain't got to yeah. say anything else, right? Number one scoring offense in the country. Number one scoring off Tennessee history. So, yeah, it's flex. Right now, Hooker. Do I think Nico's going to go out there and change that? Yes. But you're going to have to do it, right? So, uh, we'll see, man. I think the kid's special. Everyone who's been around him thinks he's special. Um, uh, we'll see, man. But, uh yeah, I, th- I think he's going to do some work this this fall, and I think everyone's sitting on a really exciting season. And I think, uh, unfortunately, for the rest of the Southeastern Conference, they're going to have to eat uh, a lot of crow this coming season because um, they think that we're just hyped up about some random freshman who could be overhyped. But, um, you know, sometimes the hype is real. Uh, to, I to, believe it to be. We're about to find out. I want, I want to address this comment real quick, and then we'll, we'll kind of keep this conversation on Nico rolling uh, because I recognize this, dude. This is one of my uh, constant disagree disagree every, every day. Every day when I talk about running backs, this guy disagrees with me. Uh, so he's a Khalifa Keith defender, and I welcome it, man. I welcome you guys to challenge me. Anytime you disagree, let me know. He said, did Khalifa ever get the ball outside of a short yard situation? I don't think so. It's hard to get a 20-yard gain on third and goal from the two. Khalifa Keith in the orange-white game had nine carries for 28 yards. He had nine carries for 28 yards. In 2023, he had 10 carries for 21 yards. He averaged 2.1 yards per carry last year. Uh, He struggled in the orange-and-white game. Nine carries for 28 yards. If you guys think he's a world beater, by all means, continue to believe that. I'm doubting the kid. I hope he proves me wrong. I do. I see more flash with Deshaun Bishop. Deshaun Bishop is a guy that I'm like, okay, p- please, please prove me wrong. And and I hope I'm wrong about Khalifa Keith. It's just my opinion. We all have our opinions, right? And and I don't I don't know any more about football than you guys do. I just know when I see Khalifa Keith in pads, I don't think he's that fast. When I see Khalifa Keith running the football, I don't think he's I don't think he's an SEC running back, guys. I'm sorry. That's just what I believe. Nico, processing the field, uh, going through checks, going through reads. I like it. I'm excited. Ronda Dawn. Yeah. Uh, uh, go. Preach. Uh, Preach. Uh, with Khalif, uh, I hope the best for him because he has on the orange. He's wearing that big T. I know he should have two plays. He chose the wrong avenue, mm-hmm. and he ran to the back of somebody. Or if he made that one jump step, he could have had a gasher. But, I mean, he's young, so I can, I can give him that. Maybe he learned that over a period of time. But, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, sometimes uh, when you have the ball in your hands and you, you better make a play, you make a play. If the gap closes or the gap smashes, choose another gap. It seemed like he kind of hit the gap and laid down rather than hit the gap, bounced out, hit around the side. I mean, it's real easy for me to say because I was not there with him on the field. But if you're going to be a playmaker, you make – plays no matter how bad the situation is. That's all I can say about that. But that's the thing. Why he's young. He's young. Yeah. Peyton Lewis is young. Cam Seldon is young. young. Deshaun Bishop is young. That's why man, I, I it, this goes back to when Jabari Small said he wasn't coming back. I was like, man, we need Jabari Small. We needed Jabari Small to come back for this season. Like 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 the COVID seniors did on the offensive line, man. I would feel so much better about this run running back room if we had Jabari Small in it. Beside Dylan Sampson. And and then when Cam Seldon gets hurt, you're like, all right, well, we still got Jabari Small. And, you know, if the young guys come along, then you can kind of let them get in there. But I, I'm just worried about depth, man. That's that's just how I feel. But, hey, let's tie a big fat bow on spring camp 2024. I'm excited about this upcoming season. What's the schedule going to look like moving forward? We're going to do a live film breakdown. Coach Jay will be defending the belt and I'm highly disappointed that it's not always right there by his side. I, I want it to be by his. It's ready. coming. It's like, coming. It's w- coming. Are you getting like? I'm, I'm working the on the. I'm working on the room. So. Oh, oh, okay, okay. It's yeah, coming. I, like, it's coming. Yeah. He's going to defend the Talking Balls Film Breakdown World Championship next Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Coach Jay versus Rocky Top Tom. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Those are so much fun. Wrestling That's themes. A lot of fun. Tom's already told me what he wants to come out to. I got his music. I got to get it ready. Uh, it's going to be a fun, fun, fun. He's breaking down an offensive lineman, Coach Jay, defensive lineman. We're going to have some fun with it. Looking forward to that. That'll be next Wednesday at 7 o'clock. Every Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern time, we're playing some NCAA football. You, I was live for six hours last night. 
six <laughs> hours. And I'm I was suffering. wondering what you were doing when I popped back in there for a second. I was like, I'm Good. suffering Jeez. today because of it. But I love you're, Tuesday you're night. Going to work with the Lord. Buddy. There's you're nothing like go. a Tuesday night stream, man. They they hit a little different. Uh, what what else do we got coming up? Oh, commitments, man. AP AP put it out on VolQuest. Expecting two commits before the end of April. If if these are announcements, me and Coach Jay will try to cover it. Coach Rice may join us for those. Uh, and then it's going to be a busy, busy summer of recruiting, man. I'm telling you guys, buckle yeah. up, get ready. Uh, May, probably a little slow. June, a lot of visits taking place. July, uh, decisions are going to start to come in. We're going to keep you guys up to date. We're going to live stream it all. So be right here on the Talking Balls Network. Let somebody know, man. Let's Let's grow this channel together. Grateful for all the support that you guys show us. Word of mouth goes a long way. Good old Nate Pruitt for five says cover charge boogie. Out on the way out the door, Nate's like, oh, I forgot to pay when I came in. I drank 17 beers. I'm on the way out. Here's my door fee. Says, howdy, Coach Jay and Ron. Surely for, uh, sh- surely for not coming on. I'm under – sorry. I bet he meant to say sorry for not coming I was on. under I'm the weather. Under, yeah, I'm under was, the weather. It was All probably right. Wayne's song that made him sick. Dude, <laughs> this morning I told my wife, she's like, how late were you up? I said, I streamed for six hours. She said, we heard you screaming on the other end of the house. <laughs> and we couldn't figure out why, so we opened YouTube, and it was because everybody left the chat. My it's going to be worth it, Boogie. Don't worry. It's going to be worth it. When we ah. see that confetti falls down and they're holding up that, that trophy, it's going to be worth every second of it. I'm telling you. Go. Don't hold they, back. Don't hold if back. If they win a natty, I'm going to fire up a cigar in the house. There you go. Probably get divorced because of it, but I'm going <laughs> to fire, fire up a cigar. We'll drink some fine whiskey together. Ron and Don, can you imagine Tennessee wins a national like like, and we have the Talking Balls Network to come celebrate Ooh. that? Oh my gosh, be, mm. like the Alabama night was epic enough, but you go win a national championship. Oh man, Nico wins a Heisman. That would be a fun live stream. Anyways, we're gonna get out the door. Appreciate you guys tuning in. You can still share it out, smash the thumbs up, all that YouTube stuff. I don't know if I'm going to drop a video in the morning. I'm going to be on Locked On Vols. Kaner will be dropping that around midnight. Go check that out, man. We had a fun conversation about spring camp. Uh, If there's any news, I'll jump on, make a video. Uh, We'll keep you guys up to date. But that is going to do it for Coach Jay, for Ron the Don, a co-host tonight. He was a co-host tonight. My name's Boogie Bentley. This is the Talking Vols Network. Go Big Orange. Go Big Orange.